everybody all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here and welcome to episode 26 part 4 of my let's play of Transport Fever 2. In the previous episode, we got our plane to fly from England to Lyon in France and now to Constantinople. However, our airplane cannot continue its trip because we don't have the adequate supplies needed at this airport. Which won't be too difficult. We just need to supply it with food, fuel, and tools before this plane can fly again. So, also during that time, I also planned a special route for our airplane. It will fly from Constantinople into Baghdad, then basically a long distance to Karachi, then again to Calcutta, Then we'll fly into Saigon. The plane will then also make a... F after basically reaching Saigon, once it's full of enough fuel and tools, it will be a long, non-stop run across the ocean to Port Darwin. That is, if we can get into Brunel, of course. Well, Brunel, of course. So, so the route, again... For those who basically did not understand what I was saying, <clears throat> he'll fly from Constantinople into Baghdad, then fly over to Karachi, then to Calcutta, then down to Saigon, then down to Brunei, and then all across the water into Port Darwin, Australia. Now with that out of the way, we gotta get started on building our Middle Eastern operations. As we're gonna get started on laying down the tracks for our operations located here in Northern Africa and the Middle East. First of all, we're gonna make sure that this line looks very, at least very profitable. And after looking at the surveillance of the ground, the only industries available that we can serve is iron ore and oil. Thankfully, with a ton of oil wells, we can supply this oil refinery here in Damascus. And we can also supply this food processing plant as well. As thankfully, there's a fishing port somewhere in this region, if I can remember where it is. Ah, there's food, there's fish here at Badar Abbas. We can basically pick up fish there and bring it to Baghdad to be processed into food. We could also supply this with lumber and steel at the tools factory to supply tools and food for the airport supply. And fuel could come from the Tehran air fuel refinery. So we got ourselves a pretty good idea on how this railway system will be put into effect. We're going to basically curve our tracks to the left. And we're going to also set up our first station in the small little town of Tunus, which is on the edge of the Mediterranean Sea. And just like the stations in Europe, we're also going to make the stations in, on our Middle Eastern Division the same as the ones in Europe. So, it's going to be a 240 meter platform with no catenary, because I'm not going to operate electrics. Thing is, however, this is in the way of the airport, so we can't build it at this particular location. Meaning, as well, we can't lay tracks for this as well. Meaning the only select area of tracks that we can build on is basically... Let's see. Okay, this is the only angle that we can build our tracks as close to the town as possible. We'll also have to build the station at a bit of a turned angle. But however, once we get our passenger services set up, this will basically be a profitable venture. Because even though we have transported over 2,000 passengers already, we're actually delivering over 11,000 units of cargo. Even though the airport's in Lyon and... Well, Lyon and in England are not going to basically be used anymore. At least we can still be used to, well, we can still deliver supplies to it and earn money that way. 
because Lord knows we need a lot and a lot of money to cover our expenditures. Because even though we were at over 700 million credits, we're now down to 660 million. So we are actually beating the system, so to speak. But of course, we'll also need to place down these roofs. Well, those underground walkways and placing these station platforms. All right, the station it's news is finished. Now we'll basically start expand building the track. We can actually make this into an un into a cutting instead of a tunnel. Thankfully, that will save us a little bit of extra cash on the long run. We'll also basically connect this. And then connect this here. Besides, we got plenty of time before the deadline. But we don't... But however though, when it starts to get down to the needle, I actually might start to get a little anxious. Because I want to at least finish this scenario with at least one metal. That's all I want. So, with that out of the way, we can start finally raising the track ground up again as we climb out of the moose and rejoin the Middle Eastern's main line heading towards Madrid, Spain. We'll basically curb it. With a 68 mile per hour speed limit, my trains won't basically have to worry about staying under below 60 miles an hour. We'll curve this track again to the left. Do this. And do this. Alright, place down a double slip switch here, well, a double crossover switch. And that will basically do it. As for the signals, we're actually going to be using these US signals on this section. The home signals will be used primarily on the state, on departing, on departing tracks. For a second, I kind of forgotten which direction the signals go. <laughs> anyway, so the home signals will be placed here, and these distant ones will basically be used primarily for the distant placed here. All right, so. The ones with this design will be used for track on the main line going through. This will be used for uh, entering a station. This will be a departing signal. If I can just remember that's the correct ones. Pointed, inward arrow, inward arrow, flat. Yeah, that one's not correct. And it looks like we'll have to take out some more money, I suppose. Great. There we go. Much better. We'll also just use these flat ones, just only for the tracks leading into the bay, into the local passenger train platforms. All right. We'll also place these ones at the beginning and exiting of the station, and we'll place these. Hmm. 
these distance signals again. And since these trains are going to be going at quite a good speed, these signals will basically be a bit of a long distance between each other. Alright. Back into the European mainland. We'll place the signal here, and place this one here, and that should basically do it for our first section of the Middle Eastern Main Line. We'll also have to get started on placing down an area for our trains, for our train depot for the Middle East. We'll place, a, we'll basically make a Y here, set up a pair of slip switches, and place down this depot. With that done, we can now get started on our first passenger service. You'll be going to Patanus on track three. Madrid Space. Uh oh. Seems like one signal was set in the wrong direction. Let's see. If I could find that signal, I could basically rectify the problem. Because, I mean, the tracks look very well connected, and I think the signals are actually in the right direction. I just don't know why it's not working. Hmm. Okay, something is going on on this left side. So let's have a look at the signals going on the left. If one signal is set in the other direction, then that means that that signal was placed in the opposite direction. Signal looks good. Signal looks good. Signal looks good. This is really... Oh, oh, I think I actually forgot to lay down the rest of these tracks here in the grid. At least that fixes the problem a little bit, but... Still, why are some of my signals not want to work? The tracks are all set in the right direction. They're all one way, and the tracks are all connected to each other. Unless there's a section of track that's basically not connected. Hmm. Let's see. Let's just follow this track on the left and see if there's any gaps broken. Any broken gaps basically means that this track has not been properly connected. Okay, I've tried putting a double crossover there just in case if any, as maybe that's the one section is not working. We're also going to place down these dwarf semaphore signals. Yeah, I did not know that there were such things as a dwarf variant of a, of a semaphore signal. But the tracks leaning into the station are all connected. Huh. This is really, really odd. I'm actually going to cut this video right here for now, and as I'm going to have a look at the problem. And we're back! Turns out that there was such a small little piece of track missing in one area was the reason why it could not work. Well, now with that fixed, we can now get started on our local passenger trains. We'll be using our Great Northern K1 Atlantic for our pa local passenger trains. And our passenger cars are going to be these New Zealand for these New Zealand passenger cars. And since these passenger cars are going to be red, we're basically going to make them. Well, our passenger trains are going to be red. All right, 19 million credits to get this passenger train in service. These passenger cars could actually hold up to a maximum of 40, thanks to the capacity times 2 mod. 
So, uh, 244 passengers. And speaking of which, now that we're operating a new second, new route, we're going to be calling this Local Train Middle East A. And those local Middle Eastern trains are going to be dark purple. Actually, no. Uh... Hmm. They're actually going to be... Jeez, there's so many different colors I could choose. I'm saving yellow for buses, green for trucks, light blue for freight trains, red for express. We already got purple for, well, ships, and oranges for trolleys. Hmm. Well, actually, we'll put them in dark gray. Alright, so, the darker services will be used primarily on these trains in the Middle East. And with that being said, we should now also start connecting the bus station to the town. That way people will be able to travel to and from the station. And since this is going to be a new bus service, this will be bus service M E. Hang on. Bus service parentheses M E A Tunis. And the, and the bus services are going to be a little bit of a darkish yellow. And as for the buses, I'm choosing the Mac bus for this operation. They're also going to be repainted to a dark green, to a nice shade of green. And we'll put them to work on the new service. And finally, get this train onto the new local passenger train. That is, if my game doesn't crash from loading up these new mods. Hopefully not. Huh. <sighs> Thank gosh. Anyways. Our new... Our new 442 will leave the depot and take a load of these New Zealand-style passenger cars up the line. I actually like these looks. They're very old American style celestry coaches. And plus, to make it look unique, we will just have this brake van on this brake coach on the rear end. Basically, like to carry the US mail. And now that it's on the main line, it should be able to have a nice turn of speed. Now, with that done, we should start expanding our tracks again to continue with our operations to reach the next town, located in the town of Alexandria. We'll operate another train on that same, on this, another local passenger train, but this passenger train will be a little more faster. But hopefully the station won't be burdened by the airport, as thankfully the airport is not going to be in the way. Though, however, the road will have what will say otherwise, I think. Plus, if I was able to use passenger aircraft, I could basically have operated a pa a bu an airplane service between Alexandria all the way into Athens across the ocean. Though... I think I might actually eventually operate a new ferry service between Alexandria and Athens, but cross the sea, and also one between Athens and Damascus. Anyway, 
Our new local passenger train is only going at 50 miles an hour because of these coaches. But that is totally okay. I think once we connect into the station of, well, build the station here in Alexandra, I think we'll basically call it an end for this episode. Okay. We'll place the road right next to the airfield. Connect that there. Connect this here. And then we'll lay down the track work for the station. And we're out of money again. Ay, 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 ay. All right. That. Place down the platforms for the express trains and lay down the tracks for the passenger for the local passenger trains. Alright, the station of Alexandria is finished. We'll build the tracks out of the station. And then basically do the same on these tracks. There is a food processing plant located in Tanus, as we last saw. We could deliver fish there by water. Hmm. I think it might actually be a good idea. Because we can at least provide, pick up food and deliver it to the air, deliver it to some of the airports in the area. We'll connect that there, and then basically we'll travel along the edge of the coast. We'll curve it up to the left. And then, bada bing, bada boom. The tracks are now connected between Tunus and Alexandria. We'll quickly put on the signals, and that will basically be it for today's episode. All right, place those signals. Oh wait, wrong type. Uh, let me see. It's yeah, it's the N word variant. So it's the inward variant and then the pointed version. We'll do this here as well. Flat, flat, and flat. Place these signals along right away here. I don't know if these are the correct ones I used on the first section. I kind of forgotten already. <laughs> Silly me to forget stuff so easily. Alright, let's have a look. Oh, they're the pointed end. I could easily redo this section in the next episode. We'll place down a bus depot and place one here. And what the? What's this? Oh my god! <laughs> wow! We actually have another HQ on this map. Well, our main ones is in England. 
We only are level of, we're only at level one, yet the one in Alexandra is level two. That is so weird. But anyway, I think that will basically do it for today's episode. So, if you enjoyed this episode of my Let's Play of Transport Fever 2, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on my on-site schedule. And, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!